Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this series of lectures on a very emerging and relevant hot topic called FinTech. My name is Dr. Sudhendra Hanumantarao. I am the Dean, Faculty of Management and Commerce at Manipal University in Jaipur. This program is being broadcast on Swayam Parabha Channel 16. All of you are probably aware of all the big happenings in business and finance which have come together in the form of new companies coming up, new startups coming up, new products being launched, hot IPOs which are converting companies into overnight what are called unicorns. If not that, probably you would have heard of aspects of fintech, many of you must have heard of cryptocurrencies. If not cryptocurrencies, you would have heard of bitcoin. All these are part of a phenomenon happening called fintech. As I mentioned, not only fintech is an emerging and fast growing field by itself, it is also affecting other businesses, changing the way we do business, changing the way we interact with the outside world in very significant ways. So, let us take a look at what it is all about, what does it comprise of, who are the main players, what are the things that we are using, we are, many of you might be using Paytm, how does Paytm fit into this domain and what are, what are the opportunities that we can take using this emerging field to make, to come up with new businesses create new wealth, make our life easier in general. So, let us proceed. First, let us ask ourselves, what is FinTech? As you can, some of you might have guessed, it is a combination of finance and technology. Finance is a growing field by itself, technology is another fast growing field, FinTech brings them, brings them two together on a common platform. This is a new term and many, many definitions are coming up all the time. You go to Wikipedia, you get one generic uh, definition, you can go to different sources, there they will, you will get different definitions. They all roughly cover say the same thing in different forms and different words. Let us take a look at two of them. Fintech is a new financial industry that applies technology to improve financial activities. Technology has always been there, Fintech has brought it to make it much better. It is from a research paper which studied 200 other research papers for uh, which, which have studied fintech in detail. So, it combined definitions from those papers that came up with this one single definition. It is a new financial industry that applies technology to improve financial activities. It is both finance and technology. It describes a business that aims at providing financial services by making use of software and modern technology. There is a magazine by name Fintech Weekly, it is a slightly differently worded definition. It is a business, it defi defines Fintech as a business, not as an industry that aims at providing financial services by making use of software and modern technology. Technology is the underlying foundation of what we call as Fintech. However, what we call a Fintech components of it, the basic financial components of it have been there for a long time. In fact, the finance industry is one of the biggest spenders on leveraging technology and the earliest applications of technology especially the IT technology came in the finance field. For example, a payroll, it is one of the very first programs which was automated on computers. For example, these are numbers taken from about 10, 5, 6 years back, one of the largest banks in the world, its revenue is 96 billion dollars, total money it makes is 96 billion dollars out of which the budget it is spending on IT was 9.5 billion dollars, 10 percent of the total revenue they are spending on uh, information technology and it is almost 10 percent whereas their net profit was 24 percent. So, 40 percent of their profit where they were roughly spending on technology on making their operations better, faster, coming up with new products. So, finance industry has always been a big buyer of technology, it has always been big influencer, big player in the technology field and many of the technology products have been aimed at financial industry. So, what is new about fintech? Various 
technologies that financial industry has pioneered include ATMs. Now, we can get money anytime we want, wherever we are in the world. Core banking system, earlier to encash a check, to put a check in the bank, I had to go to the branch. I had to go there, wait in the line, wait for the teller, sign where they says and I am put my check and it gets encashed, maybe two days, three days, a week later. Now, thanks to core banking system, the concept of bank it, branch itself is obsolete. My account is parented to one branch, but wherever I am in the world, I can access my branch. Wherever I am, I can have a check deposited through somebody going and dropping it there. Now, banks have come up with signature recognition. The moment I sign, some of the banks today are allowing me to sign on a tablet. They are allowing me to take a picture of the check with my signature, send it to them. They will recognize my signature based on that and cash the check. Again, I do not have to go. Wherever I am in the world, I can deposit a check. I can take a photo, sign, take a photo, send it out there and they will encash that. Then something called MICR, Magnetic Ink Code Recognition. Imagine a big branch in a big city literally gets thousands of checks per day. Can anyone run through each one of those checks manually and verify? It simply the physics system will break down. So, thanks to this technology and other technologies like optical character recognition, Nobody needs to physically look, inspect the check at all. They will inspect the check, they will put the check in a machine which reads the characters encoded in a magnetic ink and gets all the details about a check. So, human intervention has been reduced, reducing errors, making the process much faster and without it we cannot handle the numbers we were handling. Fraud district detection. For every transaction you make in an online mode, whether you go to an ATM, withdraw some money, use your credit card to pay for some product that you have bought or deposit a check, transfer money. Be aware that there are programs watching your actions for your protection, so that if some unusual activity is noticed, there is a good chance that there is a fraud is being performed on your account. So, these systems detect that. Have any of you experienced that you are normally use your credit card to pay for items for 2000 rupees, 4000 rupees and things like that and one day for some reason you pay 80,000 rupees your kid's school fee using your credit card, very often you will get a call from the bank which has issued the credit card asking did you do this transaction, is it a verified transaction to make sure that somebody has not stolen your check and using it to commit fraud or I use my credit card 5 times a month, this month I have used it 6 times in a day, these systems detect that and make sure that you the fraud does not happen. Mobile banking, all of us have used this, we have used it to pay for our buying railway tickets, movie tickets, by paying for the roadside uh, Panipuri wala also we can use the mobile to make that payment. Program trading, this is one thing that people in uh, trading business do, they do not place orders one by one to buy stocks and shares, you know investment analysts, investment brokers, in investment bankers do a lot of trading. Again earlier they had to issue trade by trade for each stock. By the time they say something, the price of the stock might have gone up, price of the security might have changed. Now, thanks to program trading, which does automatically, I set the rules. If the price of ITC in India increases by 5 rupees, sell it immediately. If it falls by 10 rupees, buy 10,000 shares. So, if that pro, if the share of ITC raises for 3 seconds by 5 rupees and falls, my program will keep this program trading will quickly catch hold of that, sell that, so I do not lose out on the profit. And much of programming today is happening based on what is called program trading or algorithm based trading. I have set my rules and I relax, these systems are so fast, they sense the rise in prices or fall in prices and act accordingly in times no human can really react. Then of course, we all make use of online quotations, say I do not have to go to my broker to get the price of a stock, I can get it on my mobile and, and monitor it throughout the day and we have online trading. So, in essence all these programs have been developed over a period of time. Today we consider them all part of the same field of fintech, but some of these ATMs were introduced in 1970s. The financial industry has always been at the forefront of leveraging and coming up with new and new products which leverage of technology. So, how is fintech different? For example, take Paytm for example or this symbol stands for Bitcoin, the famous Bitcoin 
the cryptocurrency. So, how is it different from traditional ways? This is one. Fintech, the abbreviation for financial technology, is a broad category that refers to the innovative use of technology in the design and delivery of financial services and products. Earlier, we could pay using a check. Then came the credit cards. We could pay using a credit card or a debit card. Fintech has taken it one step further. Now, it has, now we started off with online payment. We go to the bank account, we get your beneficiary details, create a beneficiary, transfer. Fin, Fintech has now gone one step further. It has brought it to your mobile. It has brought it to your mobile and I do not even have to create a beneficiary. You must have seen like things like QR codes and all. Using that, using my mobile payment, mobile uh, phone, I can pay 50 rupees for buying a movie ticket or maybe 500 rupees. I can pay 50 rupees through the ropes roadside sabjiwala when I buy, buy from him a kg of mangoes. So, using my mobile, I do not have to give him cash, I can use my mobile to transfer 50 rupees as a small as small as 50 rupees to him at very low cost. So, it has enabled old transactions in new ways which we could never imagine. Now, practically you can travel without carrying cash as a as an individual. They have affected businesses in on the back end also in many significant ways. As an individual, this is the way, this is the way it has affected how we do our daily transactions. And Bitcoin is a completely different story by itself. It is what is called a cryptocurrency. It behaves like a regular currency, like a rupee or a dollar, but it is also different in very significant ways. And cryptocurrencies are a key element of fintech today. When you say fintech, we cannot divorce that term without cryptocurrency. So, in one of the later lectures, we will take a more detailed look at cryptocurrency. It comes into the picture very often uh, at a practically in every lecture. We will devote one lecture to study what are cryptocurrencies also. One big difference, one big improvement that fintech has, the question was how is fintech different? One big difference it has made is now the products and services are delivered solely by technology. That is there is no, there is very little manual component, there is very little physical component. Remember the terms, delivery of products and services by technology. Let us take Paytm. I have bought vegetables from the Sarji Iwala. He has put up that one of those Paytm signs outside. Paytm accepted with that QR code. In the previous test, what would we have done? Earlier, if I know him very well, I will keep an account with him. He will write down in his notebook, 120 rupees worth of vegetables purchased on such and such a date. Once in a month, I go to him, I pay him cash. When the next step came, credit card. I did not have to carry cash, I would carry my credit card. It happens in petrol stations for example. You go to a petrol station, fill up, give your credit card, they will swipe it, you enter your pin number, done. Now, in Paytm, we do not even have to carry a card. We carry our mobile for something else. We carry our mobile to make calls, to get in touch. But now, I am using my mobile to make payment. I am using technology to make payments and technology is all I need today. I have linked it up to a bank account in a branch which I have not seen. I have never seen in bank, uh, uh, my account details unless I ask for a paper copy. I will never even get details of my account, right? I can go to go to the web, go to my laptop, go to the web page of the bank, log in, check my details. And once I am at the Sabji Mandi with the merchant, I scan his QR code, enter the number, enter my PIN. So, without us physically touching anything except my mobile, the entire transaction is done now. It takes money from my account, deposits into his account, sends me an acknowledgement, sends the merchant an acknowledgement. At any point, I can go to that app in on my mobile and check what are the transactions I did over the past month. If there is any problem, I can take measures to uh, get restitution. So, now the that entire service of delivering cash to the merchant is delivered solely by technology. There is no physical component, there is no manual component sitting somebody, somebody behind the scene getting all these things done. So, that is one big difference. It has moved the entire delivery of products and services into on a technological platform with no physical. In fact, today there was no need for a bank, bank branch at all in fact. Somebody can start an online bank, I can transfer my account, my salary I can have it deposited without me ever seeing a currency note into that account and using that account I can pay the merchant without us physically nothing existing there. 
solely technology is the only platform. So, that is one big difference delivery of products and services solely by technology. And then there is no clear distinction between product, service and technology. Take the same example, Paytm, if you ask the Paytm company, they say it is a product, it is a product that they are making it available for free to the merchants, me and everyone. However, it is also a service, I use their product. So far as I am concerned, Paytm is for me as a platform to give cash to that Sabjiwala. So, it is a service and what is the technology? It, is it mobile technology? Is the app development technology? Is the back end accounting and transaction technology? And where does that, that technology end and the service begin? Where does the technology end and the, we see the product on our cell phone as the pay, pay TM app? There is no very clear line. We all have merged into one single mass. So far as we are, con we are concerned, as the advertisement says, Paytm Karo. We see it as an entity, as an object, but it involves technology, it, in, it is actually packaged as a product, it also provides a service. And in many cases, the technology itself is maybe a product, like all these are called payment rails. Payment rail is a technology and various products have been developed based on that payment rail. That itself is a product. They sell this as a product to various, in, in one of the later lessons, we will see about the concept of money transfer applications internationally. There is one such thing we will talk about called Ripple. Ripple is the product which is sold to companies. Ripple is nothing but a technology which links together in a big network all the financial institutions who, who have signed up with that product and helps them transfer money and do all those things. It is a technology that they have developed that implementation of technology itself is the product. So, these are some of the ways in which fintech is very different from either technology or finance, especially finance. Earlier finance, in the next lecture we will see the nature of money, how money evolved. Now money is nothing but a series of numbers, the series of bits and bytes coursing through the various systems in the world. So, in that sense fintech is very different from what was traditionally practiced. Some of the technologies involved, as I said, by definition it is technology with the dealing with the domain of finance. We will not see all of these in detail, we look at most of the, we will look more at the applications of technology in this series. We will see what are the things that it is doing for us and how it is doing for us, how we can take use, uh, use of that, but it always helps to know what is, what are the tools that we do not need to know how a car exactly runs, but it is always used to know what an engine is, what a transmission is, how the AC system work, how does the brake and clutch system work. And if a car breaks down, we will be able to describe if the car breaks down on the side of the road, we will be in a position to describe to the mechanic something we know that the engine seems to be overheating, the brake is failing, I have had a flat tire. So, even though we drive car without, we do not have to worry about being a driver, I do not have to worry about how a car works, it is always useful to know what makes a car, how does these parts mesh together in some way so that we can get a better picture for ourselves or even better. If somebody says that this is a 6 speed transmission and this car is a 4 speed transition transmission, if we know something about it, we will be able to make sense why 6 speed transmission is better than 4, four, four speed transmission. In the same way, even though we do not want to go deep into the technology as such, it helps to know what are the various terms we keep hearing. When you say fintech, they throw a lot of terms at you, what do they mean? What, what are the benefits of it? What do we have to watch out? Because one thing, one basic thing about fintech, which we will cover in another lecture, is that security. We do not see anything. We do not see the parties, we do not see people who are producing, giving us the money, we do not see people who are, whom we are paying money to, we do not see who is managing our accounts, we do not see how our money is being transferred from one to another. So, in a scenario like this, security is a critical issue. Money may be directed out of our accounts without us being knowing what is happening, without, without us getting an idea of somebody committing fraud on our account, somebody stealing account from our money from our account. So, security is a very, very critical element of fintech. In IT industry in general, specifically fintech, so it helps to know what are the components, what is the type of security I am getting, what is the assurance that if I sign my signature and send it over the internet, somebody does not steal my signature and use it to draw money from my account. So, from those perspectives, it is a good idea to be have some converse, converse 
some comfort level with the various technologies involved. So, let us take a brief look at some of the terms we keep hearing. One is one, one technology is payment systems, systems which will like, like the in the case of Paytm which helps people pay for the goods and services we pay. I mean this is the basic foundation of business and commerce right, business and commerce essentially is a marketplace, the foundation is a marketplace where sellers come and sell their products, where we as buyers buy those products and pay for those and payment systems enable that. If I am a seller, I am selling to a customer whom I am not seeing, I may need to make sure that customer is able to pay me for the product. If I deliver the product, I need to make sure that customer is paying me with a proper currency that I accept. Like in the case of currency notes, we always have to guard out, guard for the counterfeit notes, right? Like that, you need to make sure that we are being paid in the right format. As a buyer, I need some assurance that the seller is genuine. If I have deposited money to his account before he ships the product, I need to make sure that the product is actually shipped to me, it is as described. If the product is not as described, I am in a position to return the product back to the seller and get my money refunded or if the seller does not even deliver the product at all, I am able to file a complaint and recover my money which I have already paid. So, payment systems enable this entire, entire gamut of transactions to happen more than one technology is involved in that, we will see that, we will see in some detail later. But in essence, when we hear terms like payment systems, that is all they do. They enable a transaction to happen by making sure that product is delivered and money is paid in, in return, product or service could be service too. Second is cryptography. Again, I told you that what is the assurance that if I send my credit card number over the internet, if I sign my name, take a picture and send it over the internet that somebody else does not steal it. Because again, no physical presence is there, if somebody steals my credit card number, they might be able to do a transaction using my credit card number. And then now, they might have a signature too, they may be able to forge my signature onto that. Or more often, it is neither that, just I get an OTP and send that. So, how do we make sure that if somebody, internet is notoriously open, how do we make sure that somebody listening to the internet can cannot steal that? How do we make sure that if we stay save our credit card number, if somebody steals that, they are not able to use that. Cryptography is the art and science which makes that happen. It is the foundation of security on the internet world, in the information technology world. So, we will spend a little time on looking at what is cryptography. How does it ensure that if I send my credit card to Amazon, somebody in between cannot steal the data and use it, buy more products on Amazon using my persona appearing to be me. Cryptography is, is the basic foundation, mathematical and scientific foundation which makes that happen. Another key element of cryptography, some of you might have heard the term, it is called blockchain for smart contracts. Again, that element of bringing transparency, if I know how my data is traveling, if I know how my data is, who, to whom it is accessible, I will rest easy and make sure that I have made that data accessible to only to those people who need it. And like as those parties, when they see my data, they want an assurance that it is sent by me, not by somebody else. So, that if the transaction happens, if it is happened due to somebody else coming into the picture and stealing my data, they will not be caught in a situation where I can prove that I did not do the transaction, but transaction has happened. So, one of the technologies which is used to make those things transparent, in fact, another key foundation of fintech today is called blockchain and smart contracts. As we see again in another later lesson, that lot of products today are built on blockchain. Next artificial AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning. These are again key components of things like fraud detection. How do we detect that this particular transaction I am doing is not in keeping with my rest of the transactions and might be potentially be a fraud. How do we find out in program trading that this stock has followed this particular pattern, can we predict that tomorrow? its price will go up or tomorrow price will go down. How do we do it faster? How do we do it more real reliably? Tools like artificial intelligence, machine learning are all helping computers to learn different patterns and take actions in advance and to protect, come up with new ideas, to do more uh, uh, advanced training, things like that. Another thing we see here is big data and analytics. Both artificial intelligence and machine learning go by what has happened in the past. 
the more data we can give them, <coughs> better will be the decisions that they take on my on our behalf. For that, we need data and more data accumulates, it becomes more difficult to make sense out of that. So, we have tools called big data and analytics which handle vast quantities of data which the human mind cannot fathom, slice and dice them and help these either people or programs like artificial intelligence and machine learning to make sense out of that data, find patterns. They can find out that the sale of for example, sweaters starts increasing in September, winter begins in November, but these big data and artificial intelligence work together to look at the past patterns and start predicting that sale of sweaters will start increasing in September. So, if I am a retailer, I start stocking sweaters in end of August itself. So, that is the role of big data and analytics. They make sense of all the data being accumulated and help us make sense out of that. Tools like artificial intelligence and machine learning leverage, they make use of the data, make use of the reasoning we have put in to take decisions in time which humans cannot fathom. Then we have things like cloud technologies which help us store, uh, store things in the different different locations. Cloud technology is not exactly fintech, it is generally information technology in general, but fintech also heavily uses cloud technologies like Google Mail. Do, we, do you know where your Gmail accounts are, where your email is stored? We do not care. Wherever we are, we know it is there. So, it is cloud technologies which makes it happen. Unlike old days, I did not have to have a mail client on my system to use mail. I just go to my browser, go to Google Mail and it downloads all the mail I have received, I respond to them. We do not care where it is. So, that is cloud technologies. Then process automation. In many cases, humans cannot react to the speed. For example, some of the international, uh, I mean the some of the space uh, devices that we spend, send, satellites and all, as they fly through the space, they have to make decisions in real time. So, such things are now we brought to earth also. Many of the activities like trading, uh, trading stocks, shares, depositing your account once a month, making bill payment, all these are processes which are being automated. So, that is another aspect of fintech. Imaging and voice processing. As I said, now today on YouTube, you can ask the question, I am in Kanpur today, my hometown is Mysore. If I want to check tomorrow I am going to land there, if I want to check the weather, I do not have to sit and type. I use my mobile, ask the question, how is the weather in Mysore? That will respond. One of the great things that image and voice processing has done it using voice recognition, it has enabled people who may not be literate or may not like kids students, children below the age of 5 or 6 are in no position to type their questions, but they can ask the question. I have seen children use their mobile, go to Google and say, which is the biggest planet? It understands the question, comes back and says Jupiter. So, it is helping learning a lot. It is helping people with disabilities like blind people. They can get knowledge, they can do their transactions using voice processing. We think of voice and image processing high tech in medicine and things like that but they have very mundane uses too. Young children as young as 5, they can learn things, they can learn things without knowing how to write or type, because knowledge is knowledge, writing is a way of representing that knowledge. So, this has converted that into voice today. Algorithm driven processes, this goes hand in hand with big data process automation and things like that, but this is another term you will see, which essentially means a transaction done based on a preset rules, like I can set a I do not want to put too much cash in my savings account. Whenever it goes above a certain limit, I want to convert that into an FD. Sometimes they call them as a sweeping account. So, I can write a small set of instructions called an algorithm saying that whenever my cash rises above 50,000 rupees for a period of more than 2 days, take the balance and open an FD. My bank does it, they call it as a sweeping account. That is an example of algorithm driven process. Algorithm means a set of instructions. Once we set a set of instructions, these programs follow those instructions, take the action immediately without waiting for my permission. Then we have things like virtual reality, augmented virtual reality, things like that. All these are terms, no single term fully encompasses fintech and fintech is now not the only user of these technologies, but all these technologies have come together to form this phenomenon called fintech. So, as I mentioned, we do not go deep into this. 
some of them we do like blockchain we really need to understand understand what blockchain is but it has it is always helpful to have some idea some idea of what these technology terms mean when somebody says this is ensured by cryptography we understand that our information is protected using cryptography if you know more detail you can go into more details what type of cryptography what is the key size what is the algorithm you are using is there hardware enabled cryptography things like that but it's always used for useful to know what is crypto some of the key characteristics now we have looked at a definition of fintech what are the fields that it's affecting how it is how it is potentially affecting what are some of the technologies involved what are some of the key characteristics that fintech has brought into our lives one is disruptive technology or technologies it has disrupted what is disruption change to the way we do things one example is the mobile phone earlier we used to have landlines so unless you had a phone at home using a landline we had to go to those booths called as local std pa isd they used to have local std isd this is a booth where there are phones you use the phone to make local calls std calls international calls and get billed pay them immediately so we had this way of doing business either you had a phone at home you go to one of those pcos once mobile came they became cheap available what happened to those pcos they all disappeared the way we do business has completely changed so that is a disruptive technology landline telephones were there for almost 100 years almost in an unchanged form small small changes here but this new technology called mobile telephony came and disrupted that business almost completely same thing has happened to banking so we see businesses being changed almost overnight completely different way of doing the same things what is the idea of a phone to communicate with people now we can do video phones too not just voice we call video calls so that we all see each other too so such technologies which change how we do things are called disruptive technologies fintech definitely is one it has definitely disrupted the way we do things the second key characteristic many many technologies don't fit into the ex- existing regulatory framework for example billing in telephone industry earlier we used to pay per call now per month we take a bunch and regulation has nothing to do with that we buy we pay 400 rupees 500 rupees some of the companies will let you make unlimited calls whereas fin- fin- financial technology has to work with all the regulatory framework what kind of stocks can be sold how do we ensure ensure collateral for a loan what are the guarantees we give how do we account for things how do we account for profits how do we account for our income how do we account for taxes these are all governed by st- standard regulations which have been there for a long time they change only very slowly fintech industry has to work with those regulations for example there is a limitation that i cannot withdraw more than 50000 rupees in cash so a system which enables me to withdraw cash should work with that limitation it has to limit i cannot bypass the existing uh, regulation using fintech so that's one key characteristic with this technology many technologies go beyond regulation like drone delivery today they don't have to travel tra- follow traffic rules they just can take the product fly through following a different set of rules and deliver the product not like people coming in a car or a truck or a motorcycle to deliver items which we buy from various e-commerce companies fintech is closer to this they have to follow the road rules they have to follow the rules of the traffic and like drones fintech is more close to this this a disruptive technology but it has to follow the existing rules and next understanding the customer experience why do customers use mob- you make online payments so much more easily using a mobile compared to a laptop it's so easy to carry we use our fingers to work wherever we are so customer experience plays a lot so if i develop a product today i have to understand where do customers how do customers want to use this do they want to use it on their laptop do they want to use it in their mobile do they want to trust their voice recognition to make payment pay 100 rupees to ratan bhai la sabji wala can i use voice is it accurate enough i am comfortable with that it may be easy but customers may not be comfortable they may be more comfortable typing in the code number or scanning the qr code so understanding customer experience where is a very very key element of fintech fintech has paid attention to customer experience catered to that and slowly changed our customer experience itself next fourth one another key characteristic is security of information if i have no assurance that the bank account details i am giving to this particular merchant are not safe i will never do the transaction 
same thing with credit card number. We enter our credit card number into Amazon, Flipkart, what have you. If I have a bit of doubt that number can be stolen, would you ever do a transaction? Would you want my identity to be stolen by somebody and used to impersonate me to do activities that I won't approve of? So, security of information is of paramount importance in the fintech field. It is one of the key characteristics, one of the key drivers, one of the key uh, thrust areas to make our information more and more. Sometimes it adds to bad customer experience. Today, thanks to the threat to security of information, to do a transaction, how many pieces of data you have to do? You have to maybe you enter your password, you may have to enter your PIN, you will have to enter your OTP. Sometimes you may have to enter two OTPs, one from the credit card company, one from the bank. So, it is making us do more work too, but it is with the purpose of making ensuring security of information and handle real life complexities. Many of the roadside merchants earlier could not accept credit card because they did not have the swiper. Mobile overcame that. The real life complexity in a diverse country like India is things like where much of the business happens on the road, there was no access to these advanced tools. Credit card companies, credit cards have been there for 100 years now, more than 50, 60 years, not 100, 50 to 60 years. But these roadside merchants were not equipped to handle that, that is a real life complexity. So, how did fintech overtake, overcome that? By taking advantage of a platform already there, mobile came, it became very accessible to everyone, so everybody got a mobile. Now, fintech was built on top of that to handle this complexity, so that apps came like Paytm, Google Pay, Amazon Pay, what have you, which leverage of the mobile platform which is available th with everyone and enable us to do online transactions with somebody selling Pani Puri on the side of the road. So, fintech has to account for real life complexities. We will see a product called M-Pesa, an online mobile payment system which originated in Kenya. It actually came off not as a payment system, a method to transfer money and withdraw money from bank ATMs. So, M-Pesa was linked to bank ATMs in Kenya. So, if somebody is staying in the US wanted to send say 1000 dollars to their relatives, they did not have enough banks they did not have enough inter inter internet connections. So, they brought an online platform which worked with ATMs to enable them to transfer money to the mobile, draw that money from the ATM. So, fintech has to handle real life complexities. It is global in nature, but often times there has been local in its implementations and it has to operate with other disciplines. It has to operate with internet security, it has to operate with IT, IT hardware, IT hardware, software. It has to operate with the mobile, mobile platforms it has to work with regulators. So, it has to work with other disciplines, many of them are being studied. For example, cryptography I mentioned is studied as a complete discipline in sciences, it is a complete uh, subject, people can work on cryptography and get a PhD. So, fintech has to work with that field too, it has to work with merchants, it has to work with commerce and regulators, government regulations regulate commerce in pretty much every country, however free the country is every bit of commerce, every bit of business has to follow the local rules. So, fintech has to work with accounting, forensic accounting, finance people. And fintech, one big characteristic of fintech e-commerce in general, we will see is that it removes middlemen. When you, when I transfer money using Paytm, I do not have to go to the bank acts as a middleman, because I go to the bank, withdraw cash and give it to them, I do not. Now, I transfer money directly with the bank not being involved there. So, like that in various fields, brokerage, we can buy stocks today without brokers, let us remove the middleman. In e-commerce, we order directly from the producer, the product does not go from producer to a distributor to a stockist to a retailer, we go to the retailer and buy. I place an order directly with the producer, they deliver it to me. All these intermediaries have been removed from the picture, that is one of the characteristics of all these technologies especially fintech, the intermediaries, the stock, stockist. Uh, distributor and the retailer are removed from the picture. Sometimes it gives rise to legal issues, they may protest. So, for example, today while Amazon in the US works as a retailer, it buys sometimes directly delivers from the producer to the user, many times it buys the product, stays them in a warehouse, distributes, in India it works as a marketplace because the intermediaries have protested, they have been brought into the picture. So, enable, uh, Amazon enables these retailers to sell their product to you. So, when you go to Amazon or Flipkart, search for a product, say a pair of sneakers, it says who are the retailers who are selling it to you. They may not sell it to you directly, they enable these retailers 
to sell it to you. So, while by nature fintech can remove all the intermediaries, there may be legal issues and regulatory issues which they have to deal with. But general characteristic is it removes the intermediaries and new and new products are coming up. Cryptocurrency, the whole concept of cryptocurrency is less than 15 years old, but it has become a phenomenon by itself. We see it as a complete distinct product and entity. Such new products are coming up every day. This is again another key characteristic of fintech. Constantly it keeps innovating, comes up with new and new thing. So, this is a graphic which shows the various areas of business that fintech touches. The three core financial aspect, core financial domains earlier had been banking, securities and credit cards. Fintech works with all these and comes up with different different products working. It includes terms like it affects lending, there are now P2P lending platforms which we will see in some detail. International remittances, I just mentioned a case of M-Pesa. Instead of going through a bank or a money transfer union like Western Union, they do it using the mobile like M-Pesa, international remittances. Payments, Paytm which we will see in more detail. Cryptocurrency, card linked offers. Today I buy a card, I accumulate and I get 50 percent off on my purchase at Shop and Stop or uh, Reliance Smart. So, we, such offers have been made possible using FinTech. Lot of research obviously, none of it would have happened without the foundational research. It is affecting institutional inv investment. When banks, mutual fund companies, hedge funds, they are all called institutional investors. How they invest, how they evaluate securities, where they invest has been profoundly affected by FinTech. Personal investment, even our personal investment, like for example, I mentioned, I can set up an algorithm. I have X amount of money in my bank account, I have linked it to my brokerage account. Whenever the price of reliance comes down below 1500, I can give it an instruction to say buy 500 stocks. Whenever it goes above 2150, I would say sell. So, it has affected our personal investment patterns too. We can buy stocks, shares. We have companies today, earlier we used to pay 2 percent of the value of the purchase. If I buy stocks worth 1 lakh, I have to pay 2000 rupees in commission, significant amount if you know see. But now they have brokers which offer you free purchase and sales, no fee. We have companies which let you buy and shares, uh, sell shares without paying a rupee in fees. So, in that extent it has affected our personal investment. Personal finance management, we have brokers today especially in the west who offer robotic guidance. In usually somebody your personal finance manager is somebody you go meet, he will be a senior gentleman, he will look at uh, experienced gentleman not senior. He will look at your various patterns of assets, your uh, streams of income, give you advice. Today, there is a robotic program sitting somewhere which will look at my bank transactions, my bank account, the shares I own, the deposits I own, look at the patterns and come back to me with advice. Personal finance management has been automated and sometimes that advice is quite good, as good as what a human could have given me, except that human warmth is not there, but it is doing it. Then we have crowd financing. We have movies not produced by financiers, but by crowd. A director has come out in the field and announced that I want to make this movie. People have contributed towards producing this movie, various things, crowd financing. So, these are some of the major domains of business, the three key core domain businesses, banking, credit card and securities all have been profoundly in, 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 in affected by various aspects of fintech we see here. So, the subject has become so important that is being studied like you know the United Nations deals with affairs of the world in the political realm, the various aspects of United Nations deals with social aspects like UNICEF and things like that, UNESCO, UNICEF and there are those which deal with climatic aspects, World Health Organization deals with health. So, like that there is a global body which deals with financial business matters across the world, it is called a world economic forum, it, they, you must have heard of the Davos symposium every year, a famous symposium where leaders of the world, political, social and business come together, they deliberate about the status of the world, what is happening, what are the things we can do to make things better. WEF also has been seized of this matter of fintech, they have published a very detailed set of papers covering fintech and it has come with a framework on how to look at fintech, how do we classify fintech what are the areas they think is affected, how it is being affected. So, we will take a look at how, what is their framework. 
the WEF framework for fintech. We have structured our framework against 6 functions of financial services and 11 clusters of innovation. They have identified 6 domains of business or finance and within that 11 areas which are affecting which are being heavily affected by the innovation in those areas. Those 6 functions even in an environment of rapid change to the design delivery and providers of financial services, the core needs these services fulfill remain the same. We have identified 6 core functions that comprise they have identified financial services to comprise of 6 services one is payments market provisioning you will see what it means investment management insurance deposits and lending capital raising within that they have identified 11 clusters. Innovation is happening in different different areas they have matched those areas with these clusters and that is depicted very well in terms of this graphic. Unfortunately, color is not very good my apologies about that, but let me read through. We have the 6 areas we have payments, insurance, deposits and lending, capital raising, investment management, market performance. These are the 11 areas 1 emerging payment details, cashless world, smarter and faster machines, new market platforms 4, process externalization, empowered services 6, crowdfunding, alternative lending, shifting customer preferences, connected insurance, insurance. So, they have mapped these two say innovation areas to insurance, alternative lending and system shifting customer preferences to deposits and lending, crowdfunding to capital raising, process externalization, empowered processor, investment management like that. Those who are interested in more detail, please download this paper, it is available. The WF framework for fintech highly detailed and very informative. So, to just to give you a sense I have copied this picture. So, this is the way they are looking at fintech. Okay. As I said it is a disruptive technology it can this is an example of how it can disrupt business. This is a traditional uh, credit card process there is the credit card uh, processor <coughs> or the credit card network it is called we have banks which deal with this this is the bank which has issued a card to me the card holder this is the bank which is linked to my petrol station you know when I go to petrol station fill up petrol the, he deals with probably ICICI bank my credit card company is with HDFC bank. So, there is all this detailed processes and it costs money a typical credit card network charges 2 percent to the merchant many merchants do not absorb that they do not tell us some of them tell that we have to charge extra AP extra for credit card. It is a detailed process takes a long time and costs a lot of money because there are so many players it is global in nature it is costly and slow. So, this new fintech can completely disrupt that it is possible today to set up a credit card between two specific banks today no bank can afford to set up their own credit cards they have to work with one of these networks like visa mastercard and what have you all this adds to the cost and we may not need also it may be a global card I may have an international card it may be valid in Cameroon I may never travel to Cameroon. So, we do not need that capability. So, we made a limited credit card which I may want to be valid only in two or three countries if I travel to US frequently I want my credit card to be valid in India and in the US in the process by removing all these unnecessary actions from my perspective we can bring down the cost of the credit card process. Let us see how new fintech can disrupt that let us see new that. So, this is a traditional credit card business now let us say I want a credit card valid only in India and the US what does it take? It takes my bank here one bank which has issued me the credit card and they may need to work with a bank in the US which accept, accepts my credit card in the, in the US and, and a set of merchants who will accept the credit card from that bank and once in a month we settle our accounts like we do with credit cards. So, instead of this I can set up a blockchain remember we will study this in detail and now let me take a bank in India this is the logo of I think Dhanalakshmi bank or some bank in India my dealings are with this bank in my area. In the New York area there is a business called Dime bank 
So, if I go to New York, my credit card should be accepted by Dime Bank there. So, now thanks to blockchain, Dhanalakshmi Bank here and Dime Bank here can deal with each other, issue with their own credit card, which is valid only where Dhanalakshmi Bank has signed with merchants in India, maybe my state, where Dime Bank has signed a, with all the merchants out in New York area. So, they can issue me a limited credit card, which is safer, it can be used elsewhere, which costs less money, because only two banks are involved, there is no credit card network, blockchain is completely, it can be free. So, it can significantly reduce the cost of the transaction, it can significantly make it much faster and blockchain we will see by nature is open to everyone. I do not need to trust Dhanalakshmi Bank or Dime Bank, I can go to the, the blockchain and verify that if I have used, if I have used this particular credit card with a merchant in Manhattan in New York, the transaction is as I thought it was. I thought I charge 84 dollars, I can go to blockchain and see that 84 dollars or its equivalent in rupees have been charged. So, what happens to the old banks and the old uh, credit card associations like Visa Mastercard? Their business can be disrupted now. They do not need, I do not need Visa or Mastercard to come in between for my credit card issued my, by, by my bank here to be valid in a branch in the uh, US or anywhere in, else in the world. There is, so, it can completely disrupt business, this was what we mean by disrupting technology. It can upset the way business is being done today. We will see more and more examples of that, just a very simple trivial example to show even something as complicated as credit bank, uh, credit cards can be disrupted overnight thanks to this new thing. Will this happen? We do not know, but possibility is always there. So, that is what we mean by a disruptive technology. So, we will see examples of blockchain, this is an example of crowdfunding a movie. I probably will not have time to cover this, but in blockchain I will cover this example in more detail. Simple example of how a simple thing like movie can be founded by common people. Suppose I want to make a movie about Swami Vivekananda, lot of people are interested in that, lot of people have a lot of respect for Swami Vivekananda they would like to be a part of that. There will be many people who would like to be part of financing that movie. We may want to collect money from say 1 lakh people, say 10, 100 rupees from each, we collect a crore and make a movie on Swami Vivekananda. How can we do it in safe and transparent way, so that the donors are sure that the money is gone precisely to making the movie on Swami Vivekananda and I also have the assurance that I do not have one single financier to answer to my audience are the people who have funded the movie itself. So, that is how blockchain can help us do crowdfunding for a movie in a very transparent manner. Quickly, funders and producers agree upon quantum of funding and milestones and fund release schedule offline. We set up, so we the producer, the movie producer and the people funding various average public, we come to an agreement in what form we are going to pay, what we are going to pay for, when are you going to pay, things like that we set up a blockchain, all the donors put their money, it put it in what is called a escrow account, a common joint account, we will see that in detail. So, the funds get released to me, once I cross major milestones in the process, I sign up all the major actors, X amount of funds get released to me. I hire the equipment and shoot the first reel, I get certain amount of equipment. I shoot a part of Swami Vivekananda's childhood, one milestone, I get X amount of money. For, do they, for doing this, there is a process called mining, which we will see later. So, I as a producer do that mining, cross the milestone, money gets released to me in those installments. So, donors are comfortable that I get paid only when I produce various parts of the movie and various parties, we agree upon who is going to verify the transaction, like the actors agree that I have agreed to act in the movie. Hence, X amount of money gets released to me, so that I can pay them their advance and there are something called smart contracts which will transfer the funds. So, something like crowdfunding a movie which we could not think of earlier, we can do that very simply using a technology called blockchain which is today part of fintech. So, this again is uh, disrupted the movie industry, we know how traditionally movies get what funded, how they were being made, this has changed it completely, disrupted the whole role of financiers, distributors and things like that. So, one more example of disruptive technology using fintech. Some of the major benefits, one is what is called reduce eliminate friction in the finance industry. 
take credit card in example. If I go to a petrol station, use my credit card, the merchant may take the money may take 2 to 3 days for to, to be deposited to the petrol bank owner's account. There is friction in the process. So many approvals have to take place, money will get directed from my account, stay there for 3 days, get deposited to that merchant's account. Now, if I use Paytm, it gets transferred instantaneously. The moment, money, the moment money gets deducted out of my account, it gets deposited to the merchant's account almost instantaneously. The 3 day delay that used to happen is called friction. It, it, the various steps in the process is um, metaphorical called friction in the process that has been reduced significantly. And it is even more significant in the case of international transactions. Transactions are faster, cost is reduced. As we saw in the example of that credit card between just two banks, instead of 2 percent, these two banks the costs are so low using fintech that they can give me this limited account credit card for free. If I maintain my balance more than 10 lakhs, they will give me the credit card for free, no charge for transactions, enhance customer experience. Yes, I do not have to go to the bank now to do an online transfer to pay somebody, I will use my mobile, I do not have to go anywhere. That whole effort of going physically signing, standing in the line, all these have been eliminated. Lot of processes have been automated. It has been there called bill pay. Every month, whenever a telephone company, I can set it up, set my bank account in such a way that whenever the telephone company sends me a bill, it gets automatically paid. So, there is no delay. Whenever the credit, credit card company sends me a bill, it gets automatically paid. So, I am never at a risk of late charges. Now, that concept of me setting down the rules and processes being done automatically without my intervention is extending to all aspects of financial services. Disintermediation of process, I mentioned that. All the intermediaries have been re removed which makes the process faster and cheaper. Personalized offerings, so these pattern matching programs can watch and they might have seen that I struggle to pay my credit card bills. So, next time I make a big charge, they will immediately come to me and say, do you want to convert this to an EMI? Instead of me not paying my credit card every month because the transaction is big and I incur the late charges, they will convert that to an EMI. So, no late charges, I just pay the, I pay an interest, but I pay it in without any penalties. So, that offer is specifically for me. For somebody else, if their earning is beyond certain limit every month, the offering may come to convert that into FD or invest in some mutual fund. So, offerings can be personalized. Next is what is called ATW anytime, anywhere. While I am traveling, I am moving to a different town, while I am traveling, I can use my mobile to pay advance for my hotel room. You know many hotels do not assure you a hotel room unless you pay an advance. I did not have time, I just got out, finished my work, came to the railway station or airport. From there while traveling, I can pay an advance and make sure that the room is available for me. And finally, entirely new products crypto, like cryptocurrencies. These are the major benefits of financial technology or fintech. So, the Reserve Bank has come up with a guideline for various banks on how to implement their blockchain. So, in sum, fintech is a combination of finance and technology. It is essentially the what is distinguishes to that is it is a technology which drives the processes and products. It is disrupting the financial industry. It is changing the way we have dealt with financial services, the way we do banking, the day we do, we do payments. It is significantly reduced the cost, increased efficiency. Think about it. If I go to a bank to deposit a check and come back, today it may take me an hour. I would have wasted one hour just to deposit that one piece of paper. Today I do not need to do that. I save that hour. I can use it for anything. It has improved the customer experience. New products are coming up, new ways of doing finance. Now, we do not, there is a concept called P to P lending, person to person lending, which we will see in detail a little later. So, to raise a loan, a small loan, if you go to a bank, there is so much cumbersome, process are so much cumbersome, and after all that, they must still decline. Now, using P to P lending, I can comfortably, cheaply raise that loan from other people who are willing to lend. So, these are some of the basic outlays of what we call as fintech. Different, different aspects have developed into detailed branches by themselves. We will take a look at some of those things in the next nine lectures. With this, we come to the end of the first lecture. Thank you.